Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you my June birthday book. So, if you saw my January book haul, that was a gigantic book haul. I then attempted, attempted is the key word, to put myself on a book buying restriction for the months of February through May. As I knew that June being my birthday month, it was going to be a larger haul. I was semi-successful on the book buying restriction in those months, but June was as predicted a gigantic book buying month. I have more than 50 books here to show you guys, plus the library and ebooks. So let's jump straight in and talk about everything that I picked up in the month of June. As always, let's start off with the library books that I picked up in the month of June. Now, I actually picked up 12 books from the library in June, which you might be thinking, Karen, what the heck? I've been watching your channel recently and you've been struggling with your library due dates. And you would be correct, but it's actually not as bad as it sounds, which we'll get into as we kind of go through this pile. So the first thing that I picked up, I just happened to notice randomly, and it's Speak, the graphic novel. So this is based on the novel by Laurie Hulse Anderson, and I believe the graphic novel, novel is illustrated by Emily Carroll. I have read Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson. It's a book that I really, really love. If you don't know what that is, it's a young adult novel. It's basically about a girl who, over the summer, something happened with her and her friends, and she's no longer friends with them any longer, and she's become selectively mute. Um, I really love that book, so when I saw this, I didn't even know there was a graphic novel of this. I immediately grabbed it as something that I would love to read. It does have a, like, I'm not sure if you can see here, a black and white art style, which isn't always my favorite, but the actual style of the pictures itself does look like it's something that I would enjoy. So, and like I say, I know that I enjoy the subject matter, so hopefully this is going to be a really, really good time. Now, if you have been watching my channel over the last couple of years, kind of, you know that I was rereading the Teen Power Inc. slash Raven Hills Mysteries series by Emily Rodder, which is a series that I read in my childhood. And I finished that this year, and I decided that I would wanted to reread another series that I enjoyed, and I tossed up for a while, but I've decided to go with the Babysitter's Club series by Anne M. Martin. This is like my OG reading obsession. These were the first books that I was really, really obsessed with. So I've got the first book here, Christie's Great Idea. In case you didn't know, Christie's Great Idea is to start the Babysitter's Club. And in my opinion, it was a great idea. So I have this first book, really, really excited to reread this because I haven't read these in years and I loved them so, so much. I then have what Doesn't Kill Her by Carla Norton. This is the second book and the sequel to The Edge of Normal by Carla Norton. Um, I believe this is just a duology, if I recall, and follows the same girl who was in the first book, I think. Um, I presume this is just going to be another like crime thriller type of novel, and I did enjoy the, second, the first one, sorry, and with it being a duology, I decided to pick up this second book. Next from the library, I picked up Trust by Kate Veach. Um, this is one of the books that's on one of my like reading goals for the year. So I picked this up and I actually just had a look at this and realized that this is by an Australian author. So that's great. I'm not sure what this is really about. It's a women's fiction from what I can gather. And it says she has a happy, loving family. Fault lines are forming not only in Susanna, but within each of member of her family. In a single tragically ill-judged moment, the fabric it has taken a lifetime to construct can be torn apart. So, I don't know. Like I said, it's one that I need to read for one of my challenges, so I did pick it up this month, and hopefully I really, really enjoy it. Next, I have more Babysitter's Club. I've got books two through four. So book two is Claudia and the Phantom Phone Calls. Book three is The Truth About Stacy, And book four is Marianne Saves the Day. So again, really, really excited to read all of these. I then picked up, so in June... I read Armadale by Wilkie Collins. That was my latest classic that I was picking up. And so I decided as my next classic to read Watership Down by Richard Adams. Now, I have never read this. I hear people talk about this all the time as something that's really, really sad. And I thought this was a children's classic. But this is quite a large book and has like... 
almost 500 pages, so I'm assuming this isn't a children's book. I don't really know what to expect from this, except that it's probably going to make me cry. So I do have this one. I then picked up Stray by Rachel Craw. This is the second book in the Spark trilogy. I read Spark in June, and this is, like I say, the sequel. So it's just the next book that I need to read to carry on with. I then have the last books that I picked up from the library is more. Can you guess it? Babysitter's Club. So I have book five, Dawn and the Impossible Three. Book six, Christie's Big Day. And book seven, Claudia and Nin Janine. So I'm not sure how it's going to work with the Babysitter's Club because they're a lot easier to get from the library than the Teen Power Inc. books were. So they're coming in really fast in case you couldn't notice that I picked up seven. Um, and I feel like it's kind of like if I read seven of these in a month, it's going to make blow out my numbers on like Goodreads and all of my statistics. And it's going to make me seem like a fantastic better reader than I am. But I also at the same time don't want to not include them. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. It's something I'm going to have to kind of think about a little bit. But I am really excited to reread some of my childhood faves. So those were the library books that I picked up. Now just quickly to touch on the ebooks that I purchased in the month of June. I did only purchase five ebooks this month. The first one was Try Not to Breathe by Holly Seddon. This one was $2.99. I believe I found this one on a Kindle Daily deal. And when I saw it, I remembered that this was a book that I'd marked as good read as good reads. Marked as to read on Goodreads a while ago. So this one is an adult thriller and it's about a girl who was 15. And she went missing, and she was missing for three days, and then she is found in a... She's found, but she's in a coma, and she's been in a coma for the past 15 years. We're then following a journalist who is struggling with alcoholism, and she kind of stumbles across um, this girl who's in hospital, and she sees her and is basically trying to discover what happened to her because it was never no one ever found out like how this girl went missing, what happened to her while she was gone, why she's in a coma etc. So that sounds pretty interesting. I then picked up Kill Switch, Black Room and Scar Tissue by Rachel Craw. This is books 1.1, 2.1 and 3.1 in that Spark series of which I picked up book two in the library books. These were all free as I mentioned so I just decided to grab them so that I can read the little novellas throughout the series as I move along with it. And then the final ebook that I purchased was Scythe by Neil Schusterman. This was free on Amazon, which I was very surprised because it's quite a popular YA book at the moment. So this is a YA fantasy that is set in a kind of futuristic world where basically people don't die anymore. Every way that people die, like crime or illness or anything like that has all been eliminated so people just don't die anymore. Um, and so there are these people called Scythes whose job it is to basically kill people to remove them from the population to like control the population um, I don't know too much about it apart from that but it gets a lot of buzz like it's pretty popular so I just decided to grab it because it was free okay guys so let's move on to the 50 plus books that I added to my physical TBR my poor poor physical TBR in the month of June also apologies if the lighting is keeping on changing the sun keeps going in and out of clouds and there's not a lot I can do with it about it so we're just gonna have to deal with it so First off, I have five books here that I purchased from my library. So I mentioned last month that my library had kind of revamped their shelves where they're just selling old library books that they don't want anymore for a dollar a piece. So I picked up five. Um, first off, I have Golden by Jesse Kirby. This is uh, YA Contemporary. I don't know too much about it, but I know it's something I've been interested in in the past. It's basically about a girl, I think, who's like the quintessential good girl in her school and she I don't know something says something here about uncovering the truth about a town tragedy I don't really know but I think I've heard good things about this in the past and I think is Jess Kirby an Australian author no that's a straight up lie so she lives in California I don't know where I got that idea um but I so I purchased that one I also saw a copy of before by Anna Todd so I own, I think it's like book two, I think I bought book two secondhand like ages ago and I haven't since picked up any of the other books, but I saw this there and I think this is like the novella that comes after the series, but again, I just saw it and figured I might as well grab it while it was only a dollar. I then picked up The Obsession by Nora Roberts. Now the main reason I picked this one up is because my good friend Emma is a fan of Nora Roberts. She's read quite a few of her books. This one is a gripping thriller of love, hope and betrayal. 
I don't know too much about it apart from that, but I've never read any Nora Roberts, despite her having put, um, published so many books, both under Nora Roberts and her, like, pen name, which I want to say is J.D. Robb. Um, so yeah, this would be my first Nora Roberts. I then purchased Forever by Judy Bloom. I've never read Forever by Judy Bloom, and I feel like this is one of those, like, YA classics that, like, everyone read in high school, and I've never read it. Catherine and Michael are in love, and Catherine knows it's forever, especially after she loses her virginity to him. I don't really know what it's about, except everyone talks about this because it's a YA classic, so I have to read it. And then I also purchased Paper or Plastic by Vivi Barnes. I hate this cover. Oh, the sun. I think this cover is really ugly. And I also am not that interested in this book, but I only had a $5 note, and so I was like, oh, I'll just grab this fifth one because they're a dollar each. Welcome to Smart Mart, where crime pays minimum wage. Someone got caught shoplifting, and then I think she has to work at the store maybe, and then she meets a boy at the store. I don't know. I don't know if I'm really going to like this, but it was a dollar, so I just grabbed it. Next, I have Shift by Rachel Vincent. Again, I mentioned in last month's book haul that I had purchased both this and the next book in the series off um, Thrift Books, and this one hadn't come in, and it did. And I have to say I was a little bit annoyed about this because this said it was in good condition, and I guess my opinion of what good condition is and what Thrift Books' opinion of what good condition is are pretty different. So um, it's got, like, stickers that have been pulled off the back that have still got residue. It's really, really worn. The spine is really, really cracked. The corners are all, like, bent and worn. Like it's just a mass market paperback so like I, I can't be bothered quite frankly to argue with them about it but I would not consider this to be good condition. Next I have two books that I purchased so I purchased like a birthday order to book depository and I think I've mentioned this before but what I do on like my birthday and Christmas I'll order like I've got two main wish lists that I order off on book depository and what I normally do is I'll order the next two that I would have ordered anyway I then order two that are the most expensive on those wish lists that it would normally take me a while to purchase because they are more expensive. And then I then also purchase generally one book that's on my like one day I'll buy these books list. So I ordered five books. Two of them came in at this point in the month. So I've got those to talk about. So first off I have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This is... The one that was like one of the more expensive ones that had been on my wish list for ages but I'd never purchased because I wanted this particular edition that's the naked hardback that's made to look like a yearbook if you can see that because of the damn sun and it's got like all of like you know people signing like the end pages like in a yearbook can you even see that. Um, this is a horror set in 1988 which is the greatest year ever. Um, because the best things happen in 1988, like people's births. Um, and this is a, a horror that's about a girl who gets possessed. It's like two best friends and one of them's possessed. Now, I read Horror Store by Grady Hendrix and it was not my favourite, but I've really been excited about this for a long time and I really wanted this edition, so I'm really excited that I managed to purchase this for myself for my birthday. And then the next book that I have is the one that was on my, like, one day I'll buy this list because I've been really really wanting this. This is the Buffy and the Vampire Slayer 20 Years of Slaying the Watcher's Guide. So this I've wanted for so so long. It's obviously like the Watcher's Guide. It's got to do with Buffy the Vampire Slayer which is my favorite TV show of all time. I've been waiting to haul this before I go through this but I'm literally probably going to sit down and read this cover to cover because it just goes through all of the episodes of the show and things like that and I love this show so much, so this will literally be a great time for me to sit down and read this, and I'm really excited about it. Okay, so now we've come to the part of the month where I went on my, like, secondhand, you know, book shopping spree. I went around to about five or six different places, kind of local-ish to me, that I go every now and again, and I hadn't been since January, um, to pick up some books. So first off, I went to the one store that I have found near me where I can, like, take my books that I want to get rid of and that they give me credit for. So it's a store that I wouldn't necessarily, I think that their secondhand books are a little bit overpriced. Like sometimes their books are like $8, like 
and I think that's kind of pricey for a secondhand book but when I've got credit to spend it kind of makes up for it and I always try to spend more money in the store than what credit I get given to kind of support the store this has gone off onto a tangent anyway I purchased five books from there so I purchased five books they end up costing me ten dollars total like once I use my credit so first off we have Cop Town by Karen Slaughter I saw they've got a big pile of Karen Slaughter books at this store and I know that Karen Slaughter has her um, like a couple of series but I looked it up and this is one of her standalone books and I own her two more recent standalone books um, but this is her other standalone like her earlier standalone I don't know what this is about except that she writes you know like crime thrillers and she's fairly popular so I grabbed this one I then grabbed Friend Request by Laura Marshall this is a recent ish thriller that's basically about a girl oh sorry a woman who gets a friend request on Facebook I think it is or she like she gets a friend request um, but it's from someone that she like knows died in high school so I don't know sounds interesting I then grabbed pictures of Lily by Paige Toon now Paige Toon and I have an interesting relationship I read her, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but the first book in it was Johnny Be Good. It was a duology, and I really, really enjoyed that duology. And I then read another book of hers, I think it was called The Sun in Her Eyes, and I really didn't like it. And then I just kind of never picked up anything by her again. But Lisa over at Books and Smiles has been talking about her a lot recently. And when I saw this one there, and I think this one might be a standalone, I picked this one up and decided to give Page Toon another go. Next, I picked up The Bone Garden by Tess Gerritsen. Now, this one I'm a little bit confused about. I checked and I looked this up before I purchased it because I know that Tess Gerritsen writes a series. like a, a, She writes the um, Rosalian Isles series, which a, um, the TV show was based on. But I checked this one and it was a standalone, so I decided to grab it because I've never read anything by Tess Gerritsen. But then I just read the back, which I probably should have done in the store, but I didn't. And it talks about Maura Isles. But I just checked again, and this does not say that it's part of the series, so I'm confused as to whether she's just like pops up in this one and it's not actually part of that series or how this works. So if anyone's read this or read Tess Gerritsen and understands what's the go with that, please let me know down below because I'm confused. Um, this is a crime thriller. I don't really know too much about it apart from that, but I did grab it. And then I also, the final one I grabbed in that store was Daddy's Girl by Lisa Scottaline. Lisa Scottaline is an author that I've seen kind of around recently, just kind of on Goodreads, and I know I marked another book of hers um, as to read recently. And again, I just decided that to grab this one and give it a go as like a standalone, because again, this is just a standalone thriller, crime thriller. And she's got quite a lot of books, Lisa Scott line, so it's just one that I've decided I'd I'd give a go. So next I moved on to a second, secondhand store, and I picked up two books at that one. So first off, I picked up The Dinner by Herman Kosh. I've seen this book quite a few times, and it's always this cover. I don't know if this is the Australian cover, because I always see it in secondhand bookstores. It's always this cover. And I've wanted I've been interested in this book for a long time, but I hate this cover. I hate it. But I just decided to give in and purchase it and then if I read it and I really love it maybe I'll buy a nicer edition because oh I hate this cover so much so this is about two couples who have sons who go to school together and they meet up to discuss something that happened between their sons but we, I don't think we know what it is and it's just like this really tense like time I've heard pretty good things about this I've always been interested in it and I believe there was a movie does this movie have Kate Winslet in it Anyway, I've been mentioning this for a long time, and even though I hate the cover, I did decide to grab it. I then found a copy of After by Anna Todd, which, as I mentioned quite a while ago, I had found book two. So now I have book one and book two and the novella afterwards, and eventually maybe I'll find book three and four secondhand as well. I'm going to stop telling you guys which ones I got at which store, because you guys don't care, and I can't frankly remember exactly. So next I picked up a copy of Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Now, I actually purchased this on ebook a little while ago. Um, but I've been really wanting to read this and I do own her other book and so I thought when I saw it secondhand I was like oh I'll grab it now the fun thing about this one is I saw another copy of this earlier in the day and it was pretty battered and I was like oh no I don't want it if it's in like crappy condition and then I saw it again and I was like oh great this one's in great condition not anymore I don't know if you guys can see this yeah this is chewed Winnie who's sitting right over here she chewed this book so, hmm. so this is a, like, 
literary fiction that's got to do with a like a group of people who all live on the same street. I can't really remember too much about it apart from that. But like I said, I've heard good things about this and I wanted to read it. And even though I owned it on ebook, I spent money because it was only four dollars for this one. I then purchased Second Life by S.J. Watson. Again, I don't know too much about this one either, except that her book Before I Go to Sleep, which I do own but haven't read, is pretty popular. And I just assumed that this was another one of her like thriller novels. And so I bought it. I then found a copy of The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. This is a pretty recent thriller, so I was excited to see it there. And I believe this is about a woman who's jealous of another woman who's like the wife. I don't know if it's like the new wife of her ex or something. I don't really know. It was, I just saw it and knew that it was a recent thriller, and so I grabbed it. I then grabbed a copy of Neighbours by Maureen S. Pusty? Pusty? I don't know. Can you guys even see that cover? The sun is playing havoc with this video today. So this was a dollar and it's just a mass market paperback horror. It's about love thy neighbor to death. And I presume it's going to have an evil child because, again, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this little girl on the cover here, she looks creepy AF. So pray they stay home. I don't know. I realized recently that I just haven't read a lot of horror in the last couple of years and I do really enjoy a good horror novel. So I saw this and I was like, it's a dollar, I'm just going to grab it. I then picked up Sisters by Claire Douglas, which has a sticker half ripped off that I still need to get off. Um, again, this is one that I recognize because at some point I have marked this as to read on Goodreads. When one sister dies, the other must go to desperate lengths to survive. When one sister lies, she must protect her secret at all costs. When the truth outs, will either sister survive? One lied, one died. I don't really know, but it's a thriller that's got something to do with sisters. And I don't know. Like I said, I just recognize it as having marked it as to read. And so I bought it. I don't have great reasonings for most of these books, you guys, in case you hadn't noticed. Next, I picked up Three Wishes by Leanne Moriarty. Leanne Moriarty is an author that I just basically want to read all of her books. So far, I've only read Big Little Lies and What Alice Forgot. But I enjoyed both of those. And I saw this and I knew it was one that I didn't own yet. I think actually maybe I own all of her books now. Maybe. Um, but yeah, so I just grabbed this one. Next, I found two more kind of mass market horror books. So first off, I have Hellboard by Dana Reed. This one, I believe, is about a girl who gets bullied and then she calls on the powers of a Ouija board to like sick some kind of like satanic forces onto the people who bully her. And then I also have When Shadows Fall by Brian Scott Smith. This one is about a guy who sees his aunt's new friends doing some kind of satanic ritual but they see him as well and know that he saw and then I presume that they're trying to kill him or something like that I don't know like I said just some good mass market horrors I'm really looking forward to reading these quite frankly next I found a copy of The Martian by Andy Weir this is a book that I have never read it's very popular haven't seen the movie I know it's about a guy who's stranded on Mars I know it's apparently supposed to be really really funny and I also know that it was four dollars so I bought it. Then I found a copy of The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. I was excited to see this because I own um, the other book by Claire North, the one that came out after this one, The Sudden Appearance of Hope. And I wanted to read this one as well, so I was excited to see this. This one is about a guy who has 15 lives and he was always kind of living the same life, but then at... And he's aware that he just keeps living the same life and then dying or something. And then near the end of his 11th life, 11th life, a little girl appears and says, tells him something that's going to like change the future. I don't, that's a very crap synopsis that I just gave you, but I've been interested in this for a long time. So I was excited. And again, this one was $4. I then found a copy of The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. This one is based on a true story. Um, and it's obviously a World War II novel. I, again, recognize, picked this one up because I recognized it as being quite a recent release. And I actually believe that Lindsay just read this and enjoyed it. So I am excited um, to read this one. I then found another book that I was very excited to see. And that is Bird Box by Josh Malaman. This one was $4. I've been wanting to read this for so, so long. This is a horror novel that's about a world where there's something, something, we don't know what it is, that, but whenever anyone sees it, they literally go crazy and start murdering people. And so everyone 
is like blindfolded and can't see anything. And I believe it's about a pregnant woman who's trying to get herself and her two kids to like somewhere new to live in safety, but they just have to go about it like being completely blindfolded because literally you can't look at anything because you'll just like go crazy. So I've been interested in this for a long time. This gets massive, massive buzz and I was really excited to find this secondhand. Next, I've picked up The Darkest Secret by Alex Marwood. This is a thriller about a three-year-old little girl who goes missing and it's set over two different weekends. The first when Coco goes missing and the second 15 years later where at last the darkest of secrets will be revealed. I know it just sounds like a good time. It's a thriller and I love thrillers. I then found a copy of The Girl Who Takes an Eye for an Eye by Stig Larson. I believe this is the most recent one in the Millennium series. Um, this is the girl with the dragon tattoo, the girl who played with fire, and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. That's the first three which I've read. And I own the fourth book that was published. So this has been published by, so it's not just by Stig Larson. It's actually by David Lagerkrantz, who is continuing on with the series, I believe, based on Stig Larson's like, notes and unfinished manuscripts, something like that. I do own the fourth book. And so when I saw this, I just thought, oh, well, I might as well grab it secondhand because it was only $4. And so I thought I could add this and eventually I'll continue on with the series and read these most recent two. Next, I grabbed The Pool House by Tasmina Perry. This one again is some kind of thriller, someone lied, someone died. That is a popular tagline. I believe this is about a woman who goes to a Hampton summer house with a group of people and she discovers that there was a woman the year prior who um, died, was found dead in the pool, believed to be drowned. And then I think it's about her kind of discovering that everyone kind of at the at this summer house has some kind of secret. So I don't know, that just sounded like a lot of fun. I then picked up The Haunting of Sunshine Girl by Paige McKenzie. This one I grabbed because it was a title that I recognized and I thought, oh, this is gonna be a young adult horror. And then I think upon looking at this, realized that this is the first book in a series. So I may read this and then if it's worth purchasing the other ones, but I don't think I'll rush out to purchase the next ones in this series because I don't know too much about it, but I believe this is a young adult horror. Next, I grabbed Lying Out Loud by Cody Keplinger. I'm not going to lie, I literally just grabbed this because I recognize Cody Keplinger as being the author of The Duff. I don't know what this is about. I presume it's going to have to do something, something to do with lying. But yeah, I can, like I said, really flimsy reasons for why I purchased most of these books. I then grabbed another mass market horror book. This one's called Dead to the World by J.N. Williamson. If you look closely, they are all around you. The hooded jogger who rattles past you. Outwardly, they seem normal, perhaps too normal, but each and every one is infected with evil and dead to the world. So I presume maybe it's got something to do with zombie people or something like that. I don't know. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun, though. I then purchased, so while I was going about all of the secondhand shopping, I stopped in at the library because I needed to go to the library that day. And I purchased two more books from the, like, library sale. So I purchased All the Truth That's In Me by Julie Berry. Again, this I just kind of grabbed because I recognized it as being a YA, like, mystery, thriller, horror type book. I don't have a better excuse than that. And I then also grabbed um, Never Always Sometimes by Addie Alsed. Again, I just kind of picked this up because it was a book that I recognized. I believe this one is about um, a boy and a girl who are best friends in high school, and they've made, like, a list of all of the things that they'll never do. And I don't... I can't remember if they decide that they should check everything on that list off or someone starts to break the rules or whatever. I don't really know. I just heard about this and I recognized it and it was a dollar, so I bought it. So then on the way home from the library and all of that kind of secondhand book shopping, I stopped in at one final store and I picked up four books at that store. But the great thing about this one was that I had all the points on my card because most of these were from the Salvation Army stores. And here we have like a loyalty program where you earn points. And I used my points to purchase these last four books. So I ended up getting these four for $1.50. So I was really happy with that. And I also found a copy of The Lion Game by Ruth Ware, which I was really excited about. This is one of her more recent releases. I think this is about a group of friends who have some kind of lion game and then it's something happens and then it's in the future. I don't know. I just know that it's a recent thriller. And so I grabbed it. I also found a copy of It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This is a pretty recent-ish one of hers and one of her more popular um, books. She's generally a pretty popular author, although she cops a lot of flack more recently. I do want to read all of Colleen Hoover, and I kind of have been planning to read her books in publication order. So far, I've only read the Slammed um, series, um, but I saw this and I figured I may as well grab it while it's cheap because I probably would have ended up purchasing it eventually. 
I then grabbed Awake by Natasha Preston and I don't actually know anything about this. I, I think it's YA and I think it looks like some kind of maybe like thriller. Scarlett Garner doesn't remember anything before the age of four, but a car accident changes everything. She starts to remember pieces of a past that frighten her, a past her parents hid from her, and a secret that could get her killed. And I'm not going to lie, the main thing that drew me into this was that I think Dylan from Dylan the Reader 5 recently gave this a really crap review, and I was kind of like, well, now I kind of want to read it to see how crap it is. So I grabbed this one. And the final one that I grabbed was Get Even by Gretchen McNeil. Um, this... Again, I just recognize the name Gretchen McNeil because there's a couple of other books by her that I've been interested in reading in the past. And this one, I believe she writes like YA mysteries. And then I think that after having grabbed this, I realized that again, this might be the first book in a series. But again, I might just be that I read this and then if I really enjoy it, I may purchase the further books in the series, if that makes sense. Next, we have the final three books that were part of that birthday book order to book depository that I was talking about before. So we have Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne. I had found the second book in this series, Secondhand Book Shopping, quite a while ago and so I purchased the first book so that I have the first one to read. These have, when you put them together, all like different really bright spines which I love. I believe this is a quite feminist YA trilogy. I don't know too much about it apart from that if I'm being completely honest but I do want to read it. So I bought the first book. I then grabbed Done Dirt Cheap by Sarah Nicole Lemon. This has been on my wish list for ages and I've been wanting to buy it for so long. And it was stayed on my wish list for a long time because it's quite expensive because it's hardcover. And they recently released the paperback edition and it's a lot cheaper, but I don't really like the paperback cover. I'll put it here. The colours and stuff I like, but the whole like motorcycle thing I just think looks really cheesy. And so I decided this has been on my wish list for so long, I'm just going to buy the hardcover. Um, and this is actually, I was really excited because the hardcover is purple with like lighter purple writing, if you can see that. And I, purple's my favourite colour. And I also think it looks really nice with the uh, yellow end pages. Now, I'm not going to lie, I put this on my wish list so long ago that I can't really remember what it's about. I believe it's about two girls. And some kind of friendship between them. And I believe if I recall that I was excited about this based on Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing's review. And I think she described it as gritty and sexy. And when I heard that I just wanted to read it. And like I said it's been on my wish list ever since. And I finally purchased a copy so I'm excited about that. And I then, the final one from that birthday book depository order was The Merciless 3 by Danielle Vega. I own books 1 and 2. I love the way that these look with these like naked hard covers. This one is like this rainbowy kind of look. The first one is bright pink. The second one is gold. And the, there's a fourth book that's recently been released, which is black. Oh, the aesthetic of these books is just gorgeous. Next, I have two books that I purchased from Dimmix. So I've mentioned before, Dimmix is basically Australia's equivalent to Barnes & Noble. I rarely shop there because their books are really, really expensive. I would love to support them, but like, they're brand new books for like say an example like an adult paperback is like $30 and I just can't justify spending $30 on one book but I have I do I am part of their loyalty program and I had uh, $5 or something already in points and then for my birthday they added $5 worth of points so I had $10 worth of points and then I also had a 25% off coupon that I could use on one book so I purchased two books. That was a long-winded story. You guys don't care. So first off, I purchased Save the Date by Morgan Matson. I do own all of Morgan Matson's books. I've read three of them and really enjoyed them. I had never seen this cover until I saw it in the store. I presume this is the um, Australian cover. I'm not sure if it's the same in the UK. But yeah, I believe this is about a girl whose family... Her older sister's getting married and all of her family's getting together for the wedding. And it follows that kind of weekend. I say... I just bought it because it was Morgan Matson and I own all of her books and so I grabbed it. And then I also grabbed Bad Romance by Heather Demetrios. This is a YA story that follows an abusive relationship. which I'm always interested in books that deal with that kind of topic and I love this cover. So I grabbed that one as well. I then have two books that were part of my just normal book depository order that I probably would have just purchased just like the normal order. So first off, I have The Retribution of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. This is the third book in the trilogy, so I now own the entire trilogy. Seriously, the sum today. Um, 
yeah, so I bought this way around the whole trilogy. This is a YA mystery type trilogy, I believe, about a girl who's recently been in some kind of accident where all a bunch of her friends were killed and then like some weird stuff's happening with her now. That was a terrible synopsis, but that's all I really know about it. But I do own the whole trilogy now, so I'm looking forward to reading that eventually. And I also purchased Shades of Earth by Beth Brevis. Again, this is the third book in a trilogy, which these are on my, this whole trilogy is on my TBR for July. Um, but I didn't, hadn't owned the third book yet, so I did purchase this one so that I owned the whole trilogy. So I am actually now going to insert a clip that I filmed uh, a little while ago where I unboxed some books that someone sent me. So I'm going to insert that clip now. Okay, so I was contacted by a lovely subscriber named Amy, who I do believe has been a subscriber of my channel for quite some time. And Amy asked me whether I had a Amazon wish list, and I explained to her that... Amazon Australia is shit and they don't even have a wish list function. And then she asked if I could send her a list of a few books that I was interested in receiving. Um, and so I did that. I explained to Amy that I in no way expected her to buy me a gift, but she said that she was just wanted to give something back to me and my channel, which is so, so, so lovely of her. Um, and then over the course of the last couple of days at work, I received three packages from Book Depository. So Amy is way too lovely and this is so generous of her. I never expected to receive three packages. So I did want to open these on camera and I'm truly impatient and there's no way I was going to be able to wait to open these until... Um, I film my June book haul because that probably won't be for another week or two. So I am going to open these now so that I know what's in here. And then I'll insert this clip into my larger book haul. So let's open these up. So I'm going to start with this one. I can get the pull tab to work. Okay. Okay. So, like I said, I presume that, I mean, obviously these are presumably going to all be books that I requested. So I have a, an idea of what is going to be in here. <sighs> okay, so the first one we have is Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. This is a book that I have been interested in for a really long time because it's a YA thriller. And if you know me, you know that I love YA thrillers. This is a nice, really large paperback. It's really smooth and shiny. So I believe this is about a girl who is new uh, to a town. She's new to her high school and she makes a couple of friends at school and um, and then there's some kind of party but she's not invited and she doesn't understand why these girls didn't invite her to the party but then she never really gets the chance to ask because one of the girls either, I'm not sure if she goes missing or is found dead and then it's kind of all about the mystery that surrounds that. I am very, very excited to have my hands on this. Okay, so let's move on to the next pack. This one, I hate when they don't have a pull tab. It's just like a sealed, like, why do they do that? Okay. I just have to brute strength it. Okay, got it. Oh, should I tell you guys what bookmarks I get while we're at it? The Little Monsters by Cara Thomas came with the Where's Spot bookmark, which is, I do have this one already, but I love Spot. I actually had quite a few Spot books growing up, so that's exciting. Okay, and next, oh, this is a, uh, uh, that's awesome. Okay, this is Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and Maguire. This is so popular on BookTube. I'm sure you've all heard of this one. Um, it's very little. It's like a nice little hardback. This one is about... It's about children or kids who have all kind of come back from other worlds. So it's kind of like if Alice, like after she returned from Wonderland or like after the kids from Narnia have like returned from Narnia type of thing. And so I think it's about that they all are at a school to like help them readjust to like 
the world and then there's some kind of murder mystery in this one i believe but this gets such rave reviews and i've been interested in this for a really long time so i'm really excited to have my hands on this such a cute little hardback should we see if there's anything cool under the dust jacket oh it's green that's cool and it's got like an embossed i have no idea what this is and you probably can't see that on camera it kind of looks like a rocket ship I'm super excited to have this. This is so cute. Hugo and Nebula Award winner. So again, thank you, Amy. And the bookmark that came in this one is I have so many copies of this one. The Tale of Kitty in Boots. I do have, can you guys see that? I have a ton of that bookmark, but that is cool. Okay, and then the last package, the last one that came, this is, oh, I should have brought scissors in. It's got second tape on it. Am I gonna be able to get this open without going to get scissors? Oh god. books a list of four books and she purchased all of them which I never expected Amy oh that is so nice okay so this one came with okay this one came with Homegoing by yeah, Josie I'm sorry this is probably gonna get loud because Winnie is so excited that there's packaging here that she can play and chew on so this is Homegoing by Yard Josie this is a book that I've been interested in for a super long time this one got buzz quite like a lot of buzz quite a while ago this is about two sisters one who is a slave and one who ends up marrying a slaver and then i believe you follow them through like several generations so like their children and then their grandchildren and kind of seeing how the different generations how their paths diverge depending on like who was a slaver and who was the slaver's wife this gets really really rave reviews very very interesting i actually kind of like dig this cover with the and which is interesting because i'm not a huge fan of orange or yellow but i think this cover is really pretty and again it's like a nice little like paperback so super excited to have that did we get a bookmark in this one yes we got a bookmark in this one as well this is the kipper bookmark so that's nice and then the one that i'm probably most excited about because i've been so wanting to purchase this for myself, it is Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson. This is a book that I just think I'm going to love so much. It just sounds like such a me book. This is about a girl whose two best friends have recently passed away. Um, and I think that the kind of line that the police and stuff are saying is that it was a... No, sorry, her best friend. Two best friends? I think it's just her best friend. Sorry, it's her best friend and two other girls have all just passed away and they and the police are saying that it was a suicide pact and she's like, no way that's happening. But her friend and her were both into witchcraft and she ends up um, performing a spell to um, like bring her friend back from the dead and I think it ends up bringing the other two girls back as well and then it's about them trying to solve the mystery of who killed them i'm so excited for this this is such a gorgeous i really love this cover with it being like the jean jacket with like pins on it that is so pretty should we look at what's under the dust jacket it's just black oh but it has a really nice pink pink writing on the spine oh my god thank you thank you so much amy this was so extremely extremely generous of you and i'm so humbled um that you wanted to purchase these books for me and i'm so so thankful so thank you so much and now back to the regular book haul bye guys so you saw those four books that i received from amy thank you so much again amy and i now have one final book to show you guys and that is a book that once again i purchased from the library sale and that is 
We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This is a modern classic. I've wanted to read this for ages. When I saw this for a dollar, I just snapped it up because then, again, it's the type of one that I can then read and if I really love it, I can purchase a really nice edition of it. Um, I don't know too much about this except it's like a horror type classic about, I think it's about two sisters and they, like, a recluse. They're and they live, both live like they never leave their house type of thing, something like that. I don't know, I've just always heard really positive things about this. And I've wanted to read it for a long time, so when I saw it for a dollar, I snapped it up. So that is it, you guys. That is my June slash birthday book haul. I feel like this haul was all over the place. I'm having problems with lighting and sun, and I feel like I explained none of these books well. But I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Please comment down below how you guys went with book buying in June, if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts. I definitely have to be so strict on my book buying until Christmas because my physical TBR books are just out of control. I'm literally running out of space. So, well, I'm already out of space and I'm just barely getting by. So, yeah, I need to be better about my book buying. So hopefully smaller book hauls from here until the end of the year. But yeah, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. But that is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys. On um, Amazon. So this is books 1.1, 2.1, and 3.1 in that Spark series that I just mentioned. Oh, my God. I cannot believe you just did that.